Steve's Small Engine Saloon is powered by Miller Genuine Draft today. Thanks to Lee Lorentz, Echo Canada, giving me this brand spanking new hat today. Thanks very much, buddy. Appreciate it. You're going to find 99 point something percent of chainsaws out there <clears throat> have three adjustment screws. You have a low speed adjustment screw, a high speed adjustment screw, and an idle screw. First of all, you have to have your bar and chain on. I shouldn't say you have to. You're supposed to have your bar and chain on, tightened to the proper tension. Also, your air filter is supposed to be on. Those two things will change how your carburetor reacts when you're doing what I'm about to show you. So make sure your bar and chain are on, make sure your air filter's on. Fire it up, rev it up, let it idle, rev it up, about a minute, something like that. Just warm it up nice. Couple safety issues here. Ventilation. Take it outside when you do it. Don't start this thing and do this in an enclosed area. I have all my bay doors open, my windows open. I got a great ventilation system in here. Don't worry about me. Earmuffs. Wear earmuffs when you're doing this. It's not going to hinder you from hearing the differences in adjusting this like I'm about to show you. Put some earmuffs on. <clears throat> All new chainsaws that are sold in the store off the shelf have some way of preventing you from turning those adjustment screws, screwing them in too far or screwing them too far out, screwing up your chainsaw. Most of them have limiter caps. There's these little plastic limiter caps that are on those screws themselves that prevent you from turning them in too far or too far out. You can still, with the limiter caps, you can still do it a little bit. They give you a little leeway in there. You can still fine tune. Generally about a half a turn in, a half a turn out, something like that with those limiter caps even on there. Um, if you're real lucky, you don't have limiter caps on there you have to have a specialty screwdriver. Husqvarna comes to mind. If you find that you have to have a specialty screwdriver to adjust your carburetor, you have to go to your dealer, ask them if they will sell you one. They're not supposed to, I don't think, technically, but tell them Steve sent you. Well, they'll set you up. Your low speed screw on your carburetor adjusts the fuel air mixture at idle. Now there's two reasons that you want to do this, two major reasons anyway, the big ones. <clears throat> Say um, for instance you uh, just cut a piece of wood, you put your chainsaw on the ground, it's sitting there idling while you're playing around with something and your chainsaw just dies and dies and dies and the RPMs come down down and it stalls. That's because your low speed screw is not set properly, it's running out of fuel. Another big one is that you want great trigger response. I call it trigger response acceleration. When, you, when your low speed screw is set properly, you nail that trigger, you pull that trigger, your RPMs should come up almost instantaneously to high RPM. There should be no bogging, no lag there at all. That's what your low speed screw is for. Here's how we do it. First of all, <clears throat> I want you to take your idle screw. Not your low speed, not your high speed, your idle screw. <clears throat> Turn that idle screw in until your chain just starts to move. Now switch to your low speed screw. If your chainsaw is not marked clearly, your low speed screw is always the one that's closest to your engine furthest away from your air filter. Now start screwing that in and out. You're going to find that when you start turning that screw in, the RPMs start to drop if you get in too far. The RPMs start to drop. Now start turning it back out. The RPMs come back up to high idle. Keep turning it out and you're going to find that the RPMs start to drop again. There's two points on that screw, counterclockwise, clockwise, 
where there's two points where that RPM drops off. Find that middle point, that little sweet spot where it's idling the fastest. Now, start turning that low speed screw out very slowly until you just hear those RPMs start to come back down. Now leave it there. That's where you're gonna want that. By far the majority of the time you do that on any chainsaw, it's gonna sit there and idle all day long and you're gonna have excellent wicked trigger response on that. Um, now, chain could be still moving. Go back to your idle screw, turn your idle screw back down until that chain just stops moving. Now I'm gonna to switch to a close up so you can hear me do that, so you can actually hear what that sounds like when I do it. Close up right now. chainsaw didn't react like that you have to take your limiter cap off of your low speed screw you're not getting enough adjustment in there you have to take your limiter cap off so you can actually turn that screw in and out further and if you can't figure it out you're gonna have to go online Google how to get the limiter caps off of your particular make and model of chainsaw once you get that limiter cap off do the whole procedure again with that low speed screw. If it still doesn't react like I just showed you, there's something else wrong with your chainsaw. Moving on to the high speed screw. The high speed screw is simply to change your high speed RPM when you got that trigger punched, you're, it's running as fast as you can. That high speed screw simply turns the RPM up or down. That's all it does. Um, the more you screw it in, the faster it goes, the more you unscrew it, the slower it goes. The problem with that is, tighter you turn that high speed screw in, it keeps going faster and faster and faster until you can blow your engine apart. The only way you're going to get peace of mind how fast your engine is actually running is if you have a little digital tachometer like that. Simple to use, you don't even have to hook it up, you just hold it near the spark plug and it'll read on that little digital display how fast your chainsaw is running. These things, you can buy them online for under 20 bucks. It's worth having one. If you don't want one, you don't have the time to get one online. The only other way, two other ways that you can do this. First one, if your limiter cap is still on that high speed screw, trust the limiter cap. Trust that it's doing its job. It's preventing you from turning it in too far. Fire it up, rev it up, turn that screw in till the limiter cap stops you from turning it in so it's running as fast as possible with that limiter cap and leave it there. Trust that limiter cap. If you've already taken your limiter cap off, been playing with that screw the only other thing that you can do is Google it again go online ask Google what is my initial settings for the high-speed adjustment screw on a and then type in your make and model of chainsaw it's gonna tell you something like this one for instance is one and a half turns that means without the limiter cap on there you take that screwdriver you put it in your high speed screw which is the one that's closest to your air filter furthest away from your engine you turn that screw in until this the screw just bottoms out until it's lightly seated turn it out whatever google is telling you for your 
model and make of a chainsaw. And then leave it there and just trust that that is not going to be over revving your engine also. I'm gonna to switch to a close up now of this one. I already got it turned out a turn and a half. Maximum RPM allowed on this chainsaw is 12,500. We're gonna check it right now and see how close that initial setting is so we can see if you can actually trust that setting or not. Switch into the close up right now. So you can see what that digital tack came up with there. It was about a thousand RPM lower than it can be. I'm gonna tell you right now, a thousand RPM lower is way better than having a thousand RPM too fast on your chainsaw. That would just cut just fine right there. Trust that. I think the initial settings are gonna be just fine if you if you run into that problem where you have no other choice just to put out the initial settings. So that's it. I hope I was thorough. I tried to be as clear and thorough as I could. A um, little subscribe button down there in the bottom right hand corner again. Subscribe if you liked it. Hit that like button. Give me the thumbs up if you liked it. Until next time guys, Steve out.